This is Apostle Calvin Brown of Christ We Glorified Ministries, and welcome to another broadcast centered around the kingdom of God. Amen. God has called us to preach and teach the kingdom, and I'm here tonight to tell you that God's kingdom is a royal kingdom. You, you're going to have to have a mindset, a perspective of the kingdom of God, especially in these last days. A lot of people don't know, and the church might not know, that the aspect, the glory of the kingdom, a kingdom, it is, it is found in its king. Amen. That Jesus is the king over the kingdom. Amen. And that the glory of a kingdom also is found in its victories. That as a part of this royal kingdom of God, amen, that we are engaged in warfare military conflict but we already have the victory you know somebody said that the devil is under our feet yes the devil is under our feet but the bible says we're not to be taken advantage of we, we are not ignorant of the satan's devices the devil goes about as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour amen and so the devil has been roaring in these last days but he has no bite but the church has to take its place, amen, to enforce the defeat of the devil and also to be spiritually attuned, amen. The Bible says that if you're not spiritually attuned, that things can overtake you as a thief, amen. But if you are sensitive to the spirit, walking in the spirit, taking your place as a son and daughter of God, those that are led by the spirit, they are the sons of God, then you are aware of what's going on. And so God has called uh, me and my wife to explain a couple of anointings, amen, in these last days. The anointing of Esther and the anointing of Issachar, God is releasing in these last days. And the Lord also told me, that we are in a dispensation of time where we are moving from the, the reign of King Saul into the reign of King David. Remember, King David is a type of Jesus. And the Lord promised David in covenant there, there would be no end to his throne. There would be no end to his kingdom, signifying that there would be no end to the kingdom of Jesus Christ. Amen. So we are in a kingdom, the kingdom of God. It is extended from heaven, the kingdom of heaven, and we are called to overcome. Amen. We are in military con conflict. Amen. But we have the victory. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Whoever is born of God overcomes the world. Amen. And the Bible says that we also overcome the wicked one by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. When we get to heaven, Jesus, he gives rewards according to the ones who overcame. Amen. He says in the book of Revelations, chapter two and three, that you must overcome. So it is not, it is not an option not to overcome. You, you have to overcome. That is the mandate the commandment of the Lord, that he has given you everything that you need to overcome. And so the anointing of God is how you overcome. We know the word of God and the anointing of God to deal with any situation. The Bible says in that day that the burden shall be removed and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing or the anointing oil. Amen. And so the anointings of Esther and the anointings of Issachar are necessary. Amen. That the church has to get a mindset that the Lord placed us in this world for a reason, for a purpose. Yes, to save souls, to bring in the harvest and to enforce righteousness, to stand for righteousness. Amen. And so. Esther is a type of the church. She is the virtuous woman. She is that one clothed in scarlet. Amen. She is clothed and beautifully adorned. Amen. And that Esther, that her identity was hidden. 
Amen. The identity of the church was hidden from the devil when God took the rib out of Adam's side. Amen. And made Adam his helpmeet. Amen. The church is Jesus' Help me, one compatible to Jesus, subject to the headship, the lordship of Jesus, amen, to be one with him, to do the greater works in his earth realm, amen. And so Esther, her identity was hidden, and, and there is much mystery <laughs> concerning Esther, amen. So this teaching is a prophetic teaching, amen, for it has been prophesied, concerning Esther, amen, and concerning these last days, amen. So I will let you know that the anointing, a lot of people believe that we are all anointed the same, and that is not true. But there are people that believe, and I've heard it with my own ears, that there's no such things as apostles and prophets that we are all apostles, that we are all prophets, amen, that we are all teachers. And that is not so, according to the word of God. The Bible says, when Christ ascended on high, he gave gifts unto man. Some apostles, some prophets, and evangelists, and pastors, and teachers for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the church, for the building up of the body of Christ, for the equipping of the body of Christ, amen. So the church is equipped. The church must receive the equipping. The church must learn how to receive impartations by the ones that God has anointed. Amen. So that is one of the secrets that the devil has tried to exploit. Amen. You must receive the anointing from the one that God anointed. Amen. To show that you're not rebellious. That is one of the reasons that God does that. Amen. To show that you're not of the rebellious spirit. That you're not against the ways of God. Amen. And so we want to read a little bit. Amen. We'll, we'll read chapter 1 in Esther. And then we'll lay some more foundation. But it's absolutely necessary. The Lord says you must be prepared to receive the anointing. You don't just receive it if there are things there. There is a spirit called antichrist, anti-anointing, amen. And so if part of that spirit, if that spirit gets upon you or in your mind, you will actually find yourself fighting against the anointing of God, amen. Everybody did not always receive the ones that God anointed. Amen. Everyone did not receive Jesus. The Bible says he could do no mighty works in his hometown. He could do no miraculous works. Amen. Because they despised. They were offended. They thought that they knew him. They said this is the son of Mary and Joseph. And that his brothers and sisters that we know. People were offended by Moses and did not partake of his anointing. There were many that did not know the ways of God. M Moses knew the ways of God. Amen. He was anointed of God to do a work. Amen. And many did not partake of that anointing. And the Apostle Paul, the great Apostle Paul, that there were very few, very few, that partook of his anointing. And he wrote, of most of the epistles or the New Testament, amen, that he was responsible for over half, amen, and that and people, the church did not receive, many did not receive of his anointing, and yet his anointing still moves, it still speaks, it is still on display in the word of God, amen. So I want to teach you how to be fitted did it to receive the anointing. So let's start out by reading in Esther chapter 1, and we'll explain some things about the anointing of Esther. And I'll say this before I get started, that it was prophesied that my wife is Esther, and that she would birth forth many daughters of Esther. Amen. And God made me to understand the other anointing, the anointing of Issachar. If the anointing of Issachar is to have understanding of the times and to know what to do. 
God made me to understand, amen, that that anointing rested upon my life when the Lord Jesus called me. He says that you will give the people understanding, wisdom and understanding of the ways of God, how things operate, amen, how things work, amen. And so even these anointings, how these anointings work, the Lord has given me understanding to give to the body of Christ. And yet you would not receive it unless you are prepared to receive it. Amen. And so in Esther chapter 1, it says, Now it came to pass in the days of Ahasuerus. This was the Ahasuerus who reigned over 127 provinces from India to Ethiopia. In those days when King Ahasuerus sat on the throne of his kingdom, which was in Shushan, the citadel, that in the third year of his reign, he made a feast for all his officials and servants, the powers of Persia and Media, the nobles and the princes of the provinces being before him. When he showed the riches of his glorious kingdom and the splendor of his excellent majesty for many days, 180 days in all, that's about six months, and when these days were completed, the king made a feast lasting seven days for all the people who were present in Shushan, the citadel, that's the capital, from great to small in the court of the garden of the king's palace. There were white and blue linen curtains fastened with cords of fine linen and purple on silver rods and marble pillars. And the couches were gold and silver on mosaic pavement of alabaster, turquoise, and white and black marble. So is this is the opulence, the, the, the splendor of his kingdom and his palace. And they served drinks in golden vessels, each vessel being different from the other, with royal wine in abundance, according to the generosity of the king. In accordance with the law, the drinking was not compulsory, for the king had ordered all the officers of his household that they should do according to each man's pleasure. Queen Vashti also made a feast for the women in the royal palace which belonged to King Ahasuerus. On the seventh day, when the heart of the king was merry with wine, he commanded Mahuman, Bista, Harbona, Bikta, Abagatha, Zithar, and Karka, seven eunuchs who served in the presence of King Ahasuerus, to bring Queen Vashti before the king wearing her royal crown in order to show her beauty to the people and the officials, for she was beautiful to behold. But Queen Vashti refused to come to the king's command brought by his eunuchs. Therefore, the king was furious and his anger burned within him. Okay, so King Ahasuerus, or Xerxes, is having this big feast and celebration lasting six months, showing all the royal majesty of his kingdom. Amen. And in King Ahasuerus' eyes, he saved the best for last. Amen. The, the, the crown of everything would to bring out his wife, the queen, Queen Vashti, that others would see how beautiful she was. For the Bible says she was beautiful to behold. Amen. So the, in a kingdom, it is a royal kingdom. The, the reason that I read all of that, I wanted you to, sh to see the luxuriousness of the kingdom, amen, of this kingdom, the Medo-Persian kingdom, where King Xerxes is king, and the richness and the, the opulence and the splendor and the glory of the kingdom, amen. And so the king, he wanted to save the best for last to bring out his wife, amen, the queen, Queen Vashti, to, to, to be the cherry on the top. For people to be blown away, amen, by the beauty of the queen. Verse 13, then the king said to the wise men, get this, who understood the times. For this was the king's manner toward all who knew law and justice. So again, we see an understanding of the times. Also, you need to know that the word that the, the king Xerxes sent to um, Queen Vashti was a command 
the, the, the word in the, in the Hebrew, we won't get into all that. It was a king's decree. Amen. We know that a king's decree is not supposed to be disobeyed. It is, it, it is, is punishable by death. Amen. To refuse the command of the king. Amen. So I want you to see that, that he, he didn't say, you know, if she could find some time and, you know, break off a few minutes for him. He, he liked to see her. It was a command. Amen. And so I want to teach you a few things because I, I want to teach you a few things in this reading because there are certain mindsets which begin to come upon people that many times they are anti-Christ, anti-word, they are against the ways of God. They, they are brought about because we were, people were nourished in the, the, the wisdom of the world. They were brought up and nourished in the mindset of the world. And so this gets on the church, the body of Christ, and they don't even know it. This, this concept of differences between men and women, black and white, different things that does not line up with the word, amen. And we have to not be offended. Jesus said to the disciples of John, amen, when they asked Jesus, amen, that are you the one, amen, or should we look for another? Are you, are you the one or should we look for another? And Jesus began to do mighty works. And he said to go tell that to John the Baptist who was in prison. And then he said, blessed are those that are not offended by me. You can start out in the Lord, and yet there are certain aspects of the words that you can be offended by. And so you cannot receive an anointing when you are offended by the word of God, the ordinances of the Lord. Amen. And it's said that they knew the times. Amen. He, he consulted to one, the wise men who understood the times. Amen. The closest of these being Karshina, Shethar, Admatha, Tarshish, Maris, Marcina, and Matmukin, the seven princes of Persia and Media, who had access to the king's presence and who ranked highest in the kingdom. What shall we do to Queen Vashti according to the law? Because she did not obey the command or the commandment of King Ahasuerus brought to her by the eunuchs. And Mamukin answered before the king and the princes, Queen Vashti has not only wronged the king, but also all the princes or the rulers. Amen. So this is, we're talking about authority at work here. That she did not only disobey the authority of the king. Amen. But the, the authority works from the head down. And offenses to authority works from the head down. Amen. That if there were those who are called of the Lord to be anointed and to speak certain things and they spoke in an opposite way, then that antichrist spirit of what they were speaking by would go upon the rest of the ones that they had authority over. Amen. That's how authority works. That's why the devil, he always tries to corrupt those who are in authority. Amen. Because it affects those that are under his authority. Amen. It says, For the queen's behavior will become known to all the women so that they will despise their husbands in their eyes when they report. Okay, so the, the queen Vashti disobeying that, that anti-anointing would, would move upon the other women. Amen. She would influence the other women. She would corrupt the other women to, to disobey their husbands. Amen. And to despise their husbands in their own eyes when they report. King Ahasuerus commanded Queen Vashti to be brought in before him and she did not. Amen. This very day, the noble ladies of Persia and Media will say to all the king's officials, that they have heard of the behavior of the queen. Thus, there will be excessive contempt and wrath. Amen. So we're talking about the spirit of Vashti, which is not good. I know a lot of people have tried to pub up Vashti and to make it seem like she was something good. It is not good because it does not comport 
with the word of God. These officials are not saying anything differently than even in the New Testament that how the wife is to be submissive to her husband and even to reverence her husband and the husband is to love the wife. Amen. And so it is nothing different than through the whole Bible and, and, and seen and explained and revealed in the New Testament. Amen. And so it says that that authority, Queen Vashti had authority. It works that way. She disobeyed the, the king. And now the officials, the rest of the men officials, they have wives too. When they hear that the one that was in authority disobeyed the king, that spirit of rebellion, amen, that, that, that spirit, that, that refusal to submit, amen, to God's authority. Authority is of the Lord, God's authority, amen then it would move down upon the rest of the lady of the officials from the greatest to the smallest. So even in the villages, amen, people that were not noble, these people were noble, amen, that people that were not noble, it would move, that spirit of rebellion would move on those, amen. So this very day, the noble ladies of Persian media will say, to all the king's officials that they have heard the behavior of the queen, thus they there will be excessive contempt and wrath. If it pleases the king, let a royal decree go out from him and let it be recorded in the laws of the Persians and the Medes so that it will not be altered, that Vashti shall come no more before King Ahasuerus and let the king give her royal position to another who is better than her. Amen. So just a little bit. I don't, I don't like to get all into Greek, Greek and Hebrew and all like that. But there, there is a point here that Vastai's position would be given unto one who is better. A, a better associate. In other words, another woman who is better. And that word better meant that there was something missing in Queen Vashti. I want you to see that. That though she was beautiful to behold, probably perfect without blemish, amen, in beauty, outward beauty, there was something missing, amen, which manifested itself on the outside that she would not uh, report to the king when he asked her or commanded her to. So they were looking for not another Vashti, that's what I want you to see, amen, not just another beautiful woman. They wanted to, that the, the king to have a queen who was better than Vashti. Amen. That means that she was bountiful, that she was plenteous. Amen. That she was a gift. Amen. That kept on giving. The Bible said he that finds a wife finds a good thing. And, and he retains or finds favor from the Lord. Amen. That the wife is a good thing. Amen. The Bible says that in Proverbs 31, that she knows that her merchandise is good. Amen. That word good means of God. Amen. It, she is a gift. Amen. That keeps on giving. In other words, the discovery of that woman of that magnitude, of that substance, is, is a woman that intrigues a man so much because the discovery of all that God has packed in her, all that God has placed in her, captivates that man to draw out of all the grace and goodness because she's a good thing. She's from the Lord. Amen. And so that one that was better, amen, that one good also means that which is of the Lord, that which God intended, amen. One who operated according to the intention of the Lord. When God made everything, he made everything good, amen. It is the, the righteousness of God, the way that God intended things to be. There is a way of God that is right, amen. You can act any way you want to, but that does not mean that you are acting in accordance to the ways of God, the righteousness of God, amen, so that the goodness of God can be tapped, amen. God placed us in his earth to be a blessing. He says, I bless you to be a blessing, amen. And so he had given gifts, amen, and to the, to the husband, amen, who reigns, amen, who leads, 
Holy Ghost. God has given him one who is of, of, of royal nature. Amen. I'm going to get into that. Amen. One who, who, who acts in a royal manner because she understands the ways of the kingdom. It is a royal kingdom. There, there's a dignity. Amen. And an inner beauty associated with being the queen. Amen. And so Vesta didn't have it. But Queen Esther, we will see, has it. We'll get into that. It says, so, it says that her place would be taken by another. It says, when the king's decree, which he will make, is proclaimed throughout all his empire, for it is great, all the wives will honor their husbands, both great and small. And the reply pleased the king and the princess, and the king did according to the word of Mamukin. Then he sent letters to all the king's provinces, to each province in his own script, and to every people in his, their own language, that each man should be master of his own house and speak in the language of the people. In other words, that if he was married to someone of a different nation, that she would honor the husband by speaking the language of the nation that he was from, the Mede and the, and the Persian Empire, okay? So, there is an anointing that we need in these last days that the church cannot do without, amen? It is an anointing to help us to overcome. It is personified, amen, in this mystery, amen. This is a mysterious book, the book of the Esther, amen, the church, the Bible says is a mystery, just like the, the Bible says, talks about marriage being a mystery, but it's talking about, I'm talking about Jesus and the church that we are betrothed unto the Lord. And we know that there'll be a great day, the marriage supper of the lamb, that we are espoused unto the Lord. Amen. That the Lord is looking for a church without spot or blemish or wrinkle or any such thing, a glorious church. Amen. The glory is the glory of the kingdom of God. Amen. That when it pertains to the kingdom of God, that there is no other glory except the glory which is of the Lord. All other glory pales in comparison. The, the, the glory, the esteem, the, to, to be esteemed in any other way, even the ways which is, are of the world do, do not compare to the glory that exceeds, the Bible says. Amen. The, the glory which is of the Lord. Praise be to God. So the Lord wants me to uh, take some time to prepare people to receive the anointing of Esther, that it will not just come upon you. Amen. You, you must believe that the one that God is using, amen, to release the anointing. You, you must believe that person is anointed. Anointed means rubbed on, smeared on, but it is more than that. It's more than just oil, the anointing oil. The Lord would anoint his chosen, the one that he selects. Amen. In fact, you're not supposed to operate without an anointing. Amen. That those ministry gifts that I spoke of, you, you're not supposed to operate without an anointing. You're supposed to stand before God and you're supposed to die to self so that you can receive that anointing. Amen. So that you can be trusted. The Bible talks about the anointing at King Saul. Amen. When that anointing came upon him, the Bible says he became another man. The indication was that the anointing changed his demeanor and made him apt and ready. Then the Bible says that when that happens, when that anointing comes upon you, whatever you see fit to do under the influence, the power of that anointing, that is what you do. Amen. And so the, the, the changing of oneself to receive the anointing and the changing of oneself, amen, to operate in the anointing. You cannot operate from the mindset which is of the world and operate in great anointing because you, you will be against the anointing. Two things cannot coexist. Amen. You, the, the kingdom of God and the kingdom of Satan are against each other because the kingdom of God is light 
Amen. The kingdom of Satan, which is a kingdom of the world, is darkness. Amen. They cannot coexist. Amen. For a kingdom shall rise up against kingdom. Kingdom is against kingdom. Amen. And you must give honor to the kingdom that you have chosen to receive the honor of the kingdom. Amen. And so the anointing is the honor of the kingdom. Amen. And so you must be fitted for the anointing. Amen. To receive the anointing, you must receive from the one that the Lord has anointed. Amen. And just quickly, we'll go over that anointing, that, that anointing of Issachar. Amen. In um, 1 Chronicles chapter 12 and verse 32, we'll just mention that, but we'll focus on Esther and we'll focus on uh, a mindset. Amen. To receive the, the anointing. It says in, Is, in 1 Chronicles 12, verse 32, the sons of Issachar, who had understanding of the times, to know what Israel ought to do, their chiefs were 200, and all their brethren were at their command. Amen. And so it's an understanding, amen, of the time. That anointing God has given unto me to understand what is going on so that I can communicate to the rest of the body of Christ. You know, we, we get up here, we preach and we teach, but sometimes we, we have to say things. You know, sometimes people get upset because we say things. I have to tell people that God called me and my wife as apostles. I would be lying if I said anything different. Amen. That the Lord called us as apostles. They laid a foundation for the body of Christ and make sure that the body of Christ built on that foundation and no other foundation. That the walls would go up straight. That the doctrine would be sound, which represents that going on that foundation. That the doctrine would equal that which is of the Lord Jesus. That the apostles did nothing differently than Jesus because they operated under that same anointing. And that they were custodians. We are custodians, stewards of the mysteries of God. You don't just know the word. God has given those to handle holy things and to reveal his secrets and his mysteries. Amen. Too. And to handle them rightly so that they are not abused or corrupted. Amen. And so that anointing of Issachar is to give understanding. Amen. God has tasked me with that, commissioned me. Amen. To give understanding of these things. Amen. I told you that this was a prophetic message. Amen. And I would to God that even if you would even hear it. Amen. That if it was from some other place that you would receive that anointing from the, the ones. Amen. That, that, that you esteem. Amen. That that anointing that God has given me and that he has given my wife, that it would permeate through the body of Christ to get on others. And that if you had one that you called your minister and God called your minister, that I would to God that you would receive that anointing because the church absolutely needs that anointing. Amen. So your behavior, what you do, how you act. It is a reflection of who you are. It is a byproduct of your thinking. So how you act is a reflection of how you are. And you, you do what you believe you are. You, you live out what you believe that you are. Amen. If, if, if you believe that you're a bank robber, <laughs> your thinking is lining up that you're a bank robber, you, you live that out. But if you, you know that God has called you to be king and priest, amen, a kingdom of kings and priests unto God, amen, to partake of the royal nature of the Lord. That divine nature of God is a royal nature. The Jesus, his blood is pure. It is, it is a royal blood. You, you are of a royal bloodstream, amen. And so you should know the things of the kingdom of God and the requirements of loyalty to Jesus and not loyalty to the devil's kingdom, amen. And so if you are worldly in your thinking, you will be against the ways of God and you won't be ready for action or the Lord's return. And I'll explain those things. Amen. If, you're, if your thinking is wrong, if your thinking is worldly, 
Amen. You will actually be against the things of God. I don't care how sweet a Christian you are. Amen. I don't, I don't care how sweet a grandmother you are, your grandpa. Amen. I don't, I don't care how you're so sweet. They just so sweet. Amen. If your thinking is worldly, in that area where you're thinking is worldly, that is anti-Christ, anti-anointing, you will be against the ways of God. The devil will be able to use you, exploit the fact that you are agreeing with him in your mind and have not cast down those types of thinking, that those types of thoughts or thinking, that you've not cast them down. Amen. Because you're a kingdom person, the devil will be able to exploit you. Amen. In 1 Peter, let's turn to 1 Peter in chapter 1. And beginning with verse 13, it says, Therefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and rest your hope fully upon the grace that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. I, I, I want you to mark that. Let me read it again. Therefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and rest your hope fully upon the grace that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. There's grace which is brought unto you when Jesus Christ is revealed. There's anointing which is brought unto you when Jesus Christ is revealed. Amen. Let's continue. Verse 14. As obedient children, not conforming yourselves to the former lust as in your ignorance, but as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct, how you act. Because it is written, be holy for I am holy. Amen. And so that, that phrase, it says to gird up the loins of your mind. Amen. It is The, the reference is to a belt, like uh, the belt of a waist in, in those days when they got ready for action. They got ready to run. They got ready to do a thing. Amen. That they would tighten their belt. Amen. So the Bible says you have a belt as it is pertaining to the mind that can be tightened. Gird up the loins of your mind. Be sober. Rest your hope fully in the grace that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. That word revelation means the appearing of Jesus, the manifestation of Jesus. Amen. Verse 22 says, since you have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the spirit in sincere love of the brethren, love one another fervently with a pure heart. Amen. So you purify your soul. You purify your mind, which is part of your soul. Amen. By obeying the truth. What's the truth? The word of God. How are you going to do it? Through the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will have to reveal Jesus in the word. Amen. The Holy Spirit will have to reveal, open up that word of God to you, amen, so that you can obey the truth. When you do, you will purify your soul from corruption, from that which perverts, that which is of the world. You clean up, you purify your soul as you obey the truth through the Spirit. Then you'll be able to love the brethren fervently with a pure heart. Amen. Because of the mind. So we see a thing with the mind. The mind has a lot to do with you receiving. Amen. And so you're supposed to uh, purify your soul, purify your mind. Your mind is your chooser. You have to choose righteousness instead of unrighteousness. Amen. So your mind can be for the Lord and your mind can be against the Lord. Amen. If your mind is against the Lord. If your mind is against the anointed word, then you're not able to receive that anointing. That when you're not prepared for an anointing, there can be wrong consequences. Amen. You know, God, he anointed King Saul, but he acted as one who was not anointed. And in, in other words, he did not respect the anointing. He did not respect the anointing that went along with that office of being king. Amen. Whatever God get, calls you to do, he gives you an anointing to do it. The anointing is that which 
causes you to be able to do a thing. Amen. What God has called you to do, he anoints you to do it. Anointings must be smeared on. <laughs> they must be received. You must be close enough to the person who is in a position that you would revere that person close enough that that anointing would come upon you and you would have to receive it and acknowledge that it is an anointing from that person. Amen. And reverence that anointing as you reverence that person. Amen. And so that the mind, amen, the soul can be against the Lord. Turn with me to Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8, verse 4, beginning at verse 4. It says that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. The King James says they mind the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the spirit, they mind the things that are of the spirit. For to be carnally minded, amen, worldly, fleshly minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace because the carnal mind is enmity against God for it's not subject to the law of God nor indeed can be. So the worldly mind is actually at war. Enmity is hostility, amen, that you will be hostile against the Lord, the carnal mind, amen, the fleshly mind, the worldly mind is hostile against the ways of God. Why am I saying these things? Because there are certain truths that has, the church has to receive in these last days. It is the secret, the mystery is found in marriage. Amen. The secret, the mystery is found in marriage because it is a type, amen, of Jesus in the church. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 5, it's a mystery. Amen. So there, there, there are clues, there are keys. There are secrets, amen, found in marriage that the church needs to operate in and in the optimum anointing. The one thing about the anointing, nothing takes God by surprise. He's prepared an anointing to deal with it, amen. He wants the disciples to be able to cast out a devil. I've anointed you to do it, amen. The anointing, is to deal with what comes upon this earth. Amen. It is the anointing that destroys the yoke. It's not by might nor power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. The Bible says that curse is the man that trusts in man and makes flesh his arm. There are people in the church, I guarantee you, that over 70% of the church is waiting for deliverance for this COVID-19 from man. I guarantee you that over 70% of the church is waiting for deliverance from the arm of the flesh instead of from the Lord. And, and they want to say, if it comes by the arm of the flesh, that was the Lord. Amen. But God is God by himself, all by himself. Amen. Holy Ghost. God is God alone. Praise be to God. His arm is not too short to say, praise be to God. There's, there's nothing too hard for God. Amen. You, the, 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 the hindrance to God is those who don't believe and those who will not receive his word nor his anointing. So I'm telling you a thing. There is an anointing. I'm telling you to deal with some stuff in these last days. But you're going to have to receive it. And I can't even preach on the anointing till I prepare you to receive it. And even then, I believe in God that others would catch a hold of this message, amen, that God gave to me and my wife, amen, and that, they, that you would receive from someone this anointing that you need in the last days, amen. So the Bible says, so then we... Those who are in the flesh cannot please God. We know without faith it is impossible to please God. If you're in the flesh, if you're not in the spirit, 
That you could say it that way. If you're in the flesh, you're not in the spirit. Amen. If you're operating by the flesh, you're not operating by the spirit. If you're operating by the flesh, you're not operating by the anointing. Amen. And you're, you, you are operating by that. Whether you know it or not, it is enmity against God. It is anti-anointing. It is anti-word. Amen. Anti-power. Amen. So many people, the church is so offended by the power of God. They're offended by anyone who invokes the word that the church is supposed to operate in power, power of the Lord. The spirit of the Lord is upon me to, to preach the gospel. Amen. To set the captives free, to bring deliverance and soundness of mind. Amen. The Bible says the gospel is the gospel of power. And everyone is trying to operate in the gospel without power. They're, they're trying to appease the mind, the emotions. I found that out, that the, a, a vast, a large amount of the church, the body of Christ, is trying to appease people emotionally with no power. Amen. And that if a person would even speak that the power of God is upon me, that the Lord has anointed me to do certain things, that they would ostracize that person. They would say that person was wacko. Amen. They, they would separate others from that person. Amen. And not even know that they were being used of the devil to separate people from the very anointing that they need. Amen. To be free. Amen. So, the Bible says that the carnal mind is enmity against God. And then in verse 15, it says, For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption, whom we cry out, Abba, Father. Amen. And so we did not receive the spirit of bondage to fear that did not come from God. God has not given us a spirit of fear. Amen. You can, you can frame it up. You can fix it up. You can pretty it up. But the word of God delivers us, delivers us from fear, from fear. Amen. And it, it keeps us from falling prey to fear and being paralyzed by fear and keeping us. It keeps us. Fear keeps us from acting the Bible says, gird up the loins of your mind. Be ready for action to move. Amen. In fact, the leadership is this. Leadership is the ability to make what is considered hard or consequential choices because you have assurance from the Lord that you're doing the right thing. Amen. If you were the only one that you would be able to lead people in accordance to righteousness. Amen. And so you would not fear. Amen. You would not be looking for a safe out. Amen. True leaders, they, that they, they, what is the word, Lord? They, they set themselves apart from the, the rest of their peers because they're willing to do things that the others would not be willing to do, but also that others would see something in them which is of the Lord and would be willing to follow and even fight for that person who is leading. Amen. True leaders, amen. They spend a lot of time alone, praise be to God, so that they could lead multitudes. They spend a lot of time alone with the Lord, amen, to, to have the resolve on the inside, amen, to do what is right, not what is politically expedient, amen, because you will have to keep shifting and changing, amen. Jesus is that rock. I love this. He does not change, amen, that we are supposed to fall upon the rock. And after we are broken, we are supposed to build upon that rock. That is supposed to be the start of our foundation, the revelation knowledge that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, and the revelation of the love of God, amen, we build upon that rock and we are not moved. It doesn't matter what storm comes, amen, it doesn't matter, amen. It, doesn't, it does not matter whether it's COVID-19. It does not matter, amen, whether it is protests throughout cities and communities, amen. You're, you're not moved from that foundation of that rock, 
which is Jesus. Amen. And so that word that we have a we have received the spirit of adoption. Adoption is not a bad word in this sense. Adopted meant that we were outside and God brought us in. So it speaks of the love of God. We have received the spirit of adoption. The Holy Spirit is a spirit of adoption that you were nobody. <laughs> you were destitute. You had nothing. You had zero. Bound for hell. <laughs> Amen. And the Lord brought us into his household, not just into his household. Amen. But he, he brought us in as his beloved. Amen. So turn with me to Hebrews chapter 2. Like I said, we, we're laying foundations. That's why I wanted to read chapter 1 in Esther first because I knew that it would take foundation for people to be willing to receive the anointing of Esther and the anointing of Issachar. In verse Chapter 2, Hebrews chapter 2, in verse 13, it says, And again, I will put my trust in him. And again, here am I in the children which God has given me. And as much as the children have partaken of flesh and blood, Jesus himself likewise shared in the same, that through death he might destroy him that have had the power of death, that is, the devil, and release those who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. So afraid to die. That's how the devil got a lot of people. They were afraid to die. The Bible says those that are born again that they are already dead. The Bible says reckon yourself dead. Amen. To see in baptism rep represents the fact that your old life, that old man is dead dead. Amen. And that you have been raised to walk in newness of life. This world cannot fear you, cannot make you afraid. Amen. This, this world cannot scare you. The devil cannot scare you because you're already dead to the world. There's nothing in this world. There's, there's no threat in this world which can make you afraid. Amen. So before there's life, there has to be a death. If you're afraid, if you are afraid, something needs to die. Holy Ghost, if you're afraid of anything, amen, then something needs to die, amen, so that you can walk in this newness of life. So people, all their lifetime, they were subject to the fear of death. And so that's how the devil got a lot of the body of Christ, the churches. They were afraid to die. And they did not trust in the word of God that the Lord had delivered us. This word is anointed. This word is true. Amen. This word will do exactly what God said. The Bible says this word would not return void. Not only that, the Bible says it's covenant. That God would, would not, he would not change the covenant nor alter the thing that which has gone forth out of his mouth. Amen. It is a promise from God. God, personal promise from God himself, amen, that in righteousness, he will deliver you, amen, amen, he will, he will deliver you from trouble, the Bible says, amen, and that Jesus himself, he, he says, if you continue in his word, that you're his disciple indeed, and you'll know the truth, and the truth will make you free, amen, so the church is a mystery, it is the body of Christ. It is the body of Jesus. It is the image of Christ if she is submitted to the headship of Jesus so that she would walk in the anointing, his anointing, and his authority. Amen. So the church is to be subject to the headship of Jesus to be able to walk in that anointing, that head. Let me just say this, that, that Jesus is the head of the church. Amen. That means a couple of things. It means that Jesus is Lord over the church. It also means that the mind of Christ, we have the mind of the anointed, the mind of Christ. Amen. That we are submitted to the thinking, the ways of Christ. They're found in the word of God. Amen. So Christ has to be revealed. This is the last thing. That word revelation, it means disclosure, appearing, manifestation, 
It also means the removal of the veil of ignorance and darkness by the communication of light and knowledge. In other words, for Jesus to be revealed, you, you must get rid of the darkness. The Bible says that a person should be all light having no part darkness. Amen. The light has to remove the darkness. Amen. For Christ to be revealed. Or else you would be trying to attain unto Christ. Amen. Through the veil of the flesh and darkness. And you, Jesus would not be manifested. Amen. Your champion, your warrior, your anointed one would not be revealed unto you because you are trying to attain unto him through that mind which is against the anointing. That you would only trust in that which is natural. You would only trust in that which came from man. And the times are here, the Lord says, that the only thing that will save is the anointed one and his anointing. Your deliverer has come forth from Zion. Holy Ghost. The deliverer comes from Zion. Amen. So, Father God, we thank you for this word to help your people to be prepared to receive the anointing of Esther and to receive the understanding of Issachar. Amen. To, to walk in this new age, that dispensation, the realization. Amen. The, the revelation of the throne of David. Amen. The, which is the type of the throne of Christ. Amen. That we're supposed to reign and rule through life through one Jesus Christ. Amen. We're not supposed to be under. Amen. Our light is not supposed to be under. Our light is not supposed to be hidden. Amen. But the light is supposed to shine. So, Father God, thank you for that word. In Jesus' name. Amen.